G'day everybody, Nick Dingler here again with another Unity 5 tutorial, this time importing assets into your existing projects. Now, assets can be a number of things. They can be 3D models, textures, sounds, music, sprites, animations, scripts, and even more than that. In this video, I'm gonna quickly show you how to do a 3D model, a texture, and some sounds, and a little bit of sprites as well, but that'll be covered more in another video, okay? The first thing I like to do is actually create some folders to start organizing my assets into. I'm going to create some folders down here just by using the same method we've done lots of times. One for models, one for textures, and then one for sounds. Okay, and these are where I'm going to put all of my assets. Now I've got these assets off the internet and I'll show you where. And I'll also talk about a bit of licensing later on. There's two ways you can get assets into your project. Okay, the first way is by opening up, I'm going to get rid of that opening up the folder in Explorer. So I'm going to right click on the folder and say show in Explorer. And I'm going to open this folder up. And if I copy files into this folder and go back to Unity, it's automatically recognizes those changes and then updates accordingly. Okay, so let's quickly do that now. This is where I got my 3D model. It's called turbosquid.com. It's free, a lot of free models, but also paid ones. I'd suggest check it out, create an account, download the file if you want to join me. And this is what we get right here, this zip file. If I open this up, it actually comes with a number of files. And this is pretty common for 3D assets when you download them. When you make a 3D asset, if you're using ZBrush, when you save it, it'll be a ZTL file. If you're using 3ds Max, it'll be a .max file and so forth. When you actually export your 3D models, you really want to try and stick with an FBX file format. Okay, and the reason that is, is Unity 3D supports FBX out of the box. Okay, it means you don't have to do anything special. If you were to just use a .max file, you actually have to have 3ds Max Studio installed to your computer so you can open the file in Unity. So just stick with FBX, it's a lot easier if you ask me. The fourth file at the top here is actually the texture of our penguin. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up that models folder again alongside. I'm going to click on that, control click on the next one. And I'm going to drag them into my models folder. You see it's already done. If I go back to Unity, it'll start recognizing those files and importing the settings and then applying a new material for the texture. And I'll tell you what I mean in a sec. Okay, all done. Open up this folder. There is our 3D model. And if I just drag him in like anything else, there he is. See, he's on the camera, beautiful. So one thing to quickly note, because we dragged both the texture and the 3D model at the same time, Unity recognized that this texture belonged to this model. It also then went and generated a material based on the texture file and applied it to the penguin. So it does a few things for you if you ensure you bring both in at the same time. If you just do the model first and the texture after, you actually have to do a little bit yourself. Okay, so anyway, there's my penguin. You can actually look at the structure of the penguin. He's got a few different things in there. One thing to note is over here in the components, we talked about uh, mesh filters and mesh renderers, you'll see that none of that's here. If we actually go to group one though, you'll see that now we've got the mesh filter and the mesh renderer here. So it's a good idea when you download and uh, use different models, have a look at their structure and then have a play around with it maybe even. Okay. And I can even go and add some of my own components to it if I really feel like as well. Bye bye. Okay, anyway. That done, let's bring in a texture. So I'm going to go back here and we're going to do this the easy way this time. I'm going to go to my downloads folder again, back, and I've got this picture called dead grass. Now I just went to Google images for this one. Then, and I found one that I like the look of. There's two things you need to find out. First one, is it seamless? It says seamless right there. Seamless basically means if I take a copy of this picture and put it next to it, that you would never be able to see where one picture starts and one picture ends. So there won't be like a line down the middle. It'll be seamless. Can't tell when one starts and one begins. Okay, that's what seamless means. The second thing is I can see that the size of the picture is even and a power of two. Okay, so power of two means if I take the number one and times it by two, I get two. If I take two and times it by two, I get four. And let's just keep doubling the number. Eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, 256. And you see, I've hit that number even keep going if I wanted. These are all powers of two and you want to try and get textures that are powers of two because they work a lot better in 3D applications. Okay, so let's get the texture into here. I'm going to go to my downloads folder, drag the picture just on top of the project tab. Bam. And there you go. I have 
my texture in my game. And if I go and create something, I can start dragging the texture onto different things. One thing you'll just quickly notice maybe is that it made this materials folder as soon as I drag the texture onto the cube. Again, we need a material to be able to apply the texture to a 3D object. So when I drag the texture on, Unity went right out, I need a material, so it made it for us. And we can do that with actually any 3D object really. So if I create a plane, drag my texture onto it. Yeah, it's starting to look a bit blurry because it's getting stretched, but they're the basics of getting textures into your game. All right. So moving along, let's have a look at sounds. So sounds are almost the exact same thing. Let's go to my downloads folder. I've got these two sounds, which I downloaded from freesound.org. Okay, again, make an account, go and download some sounds. Okay, it's entirely free in that respect. So what I'm going to do, open Unity in my sounds, drag them down. Load up, and there we go. There are my two sounds. The first thing is I don't like the names of them. They're really badly named, in my opinion. I could either rename the files and bring them back in, or I could just hit F2 on the keyboard, and it asks me to rename. So this is uh, footsteps. This one is. This one here is pouring water. I apologize for anybody that needs to wee at the moment. So to use sounds is actually quite easy. Just drag them in, and you get a little sound in your world. And when I hit play, that is work. Okay. The other cool thing about sounds is I can actually attach them to objects. So let's say I want the penguin to have some footsteps. Bloop. I put it onto him. And what I can do, if I just hit play, that sound's always going to play. It's part of the environment. But if I turn it into a 3D sound by dragging this guy across, and then let's drop the max distance way back going but go about 20 looks good okay, i haven't tried that yet and i hit play now you'll see that we actually get a drop off really quiet move the penguin closer to the camera that's where the audio listener is see the listener just falls off the bottom there anyway so that sounds in a bit of a nutshell there as well. Now I quickly said I wanted to touch on sprites and we'll do that now. So what I'm going to do is just pretend this dead grass texture here is actually a sprite. Okay. So when you actually bring up any kind of picture in, it doesn't matter what kind of picture it is, you'll always get this texture type up the top. If I change this here, you get a number of options to different things. And I want to choose sprite. And that's simply it. Once you've done that, just hit apply. Okay. And I can actually drag this in just like any other sprite. Okay, you'll even see created a sprite render object. And I can just go into 2D mode and start working with him, really. And that's basically how you would do a sprite. Okay? A lot more detail is going to come in a future video. I promise that one. Okay, so finally, let's quickly talk about licensing. I'm actually done explaining how to get assets in. I want to quickly touch on licensing. All these assets I got from the internet. Okay, which sounds pretty bad, but if you aim for the right type of license on that type of asset, the texture, the model, the sounds, then you can use them. Okay, what you're looking for is a Creative Commons, a royalty free, or even maybe a public domain license. Okay, if you look at any other ones, you really, most of the time, you'll have to get permission from the author of that thing. Most of the time, if you've got a Creative Commons or royalty free, you can just use them. Okay, for example, in the 3D Penguin model, I've actually got a royalty-free license there. Okay, I suggest read the license too because you might have to get permission from the user or the author to use it. Okay, the grass texture. What I did for that one, I did go to Google Images. I typed grass texture, which is pretty straightforward. Then I went to Search Tools, and I changed this setting. Okay, by default it says usage rights. I changed that to labeled for reuse. Okay, so any of these textures that come up here we're allowed to reuse, okay, without permission. And then freesound.org, it's basically primarily all based around Creative Commons licenses. Anyway, that's pretty much it for today, everybody. Hopefully you learnt something. But for the moment, I'm going to sign out. Thank you very much for watching. If you like, subscribe and comment down the bottom. I'd love to hear from you. But see you in the next video, everybody.